All right, Shalom, Yasharala, Shalom, Mr. Brother Ash Ibad, coming back in the spirit, giving all praises to Yahweh in the name of his son, Yahweh Shai, and a mighty Shalom to the hopeful elect. So I'm sure y'all brothers have been keeping up to date. You've been hearing a lot of the news story, in particular in the U.S., in regards to a lot of, you know, events that are resulting from extreme weather. And this has been going on across all the earth. You know, I'm sure y'all been hearing about the Pakistan flooding. You've been hearing about the UK heat waves, French, the uh, European heat waves. You know, ultimately, brothers love to talk about this because there's two things with the uh, with the weather agenda. Y'all understand the United Nations Agenda 2021, Agenda 2030 is heavily centered around climate control because essentially climate control is a way that the elites are going to be able to control the daily lives of the citizens what carbon dating carbon what is it the, your carbon emission footprint and this is going to be essentially a way for them to control and monitor how much quote-unquote energy you're using because that's going to be a way how they micromanage the people and a lot of the the relief efforts where the world is going to have to come together is going to be through the guise of climate control so y'all understand that a lot of the things going on with climate control is fabricated by the left hand of the most high and what do i mean by that the, the most high controls good and evil so he controls the wicked as well as the good all souls are his all spirits are his so ultimately at the end of the day when you see these evil machi uh, machinations coming on the earth it is to be used as judgment for those who are wicked you know and the earth is given unto the hands of the wicked so the wicked are gonna oppress the people who are on this earth but you also have to understand as well that it's bigger than that and ultimately it's just retribution of judgment from the heavenly father if you see people die in a tornado die in a hurricane die of flash floods things like that you have to understand that that is judgment from the heavenly father let's read this this is um Sirach chapter 39 we'll go to verse 27 it says all these things are for good for the godly to the sinners they are turned into evil there be spirits that are created for vengeance which in their fury lay on sore strokes. In the time of destruction, they pour out their force and appease the wrath of him that made them. Fire, hell, famine, death. All these were created for vengeance. Teeth of wild beasts, scorpions, serpents, and the sword punishing the wicked to destruction. So as we get into darker and darker times and as we get into a more rebellious state and in regards to the earth, the people of the earth continue to create more blasphemy and wickedness. Well, the curses that the Heavenly Father is going to put upon the land from the left hand side are going to get more and more terrible each and every day. So when you see people dying because of extreme cold or tornadoes and things like that, especially in Babylon, just know that that's judgment being played out from the Heavenly Father. And getting into this article right here, it reads, it's been five days without reliable tap water for Jackson, Mississippi. Here's what we know about the latest repairs and how people are coping. And I just wanna read, watch this right here. It's a story by CNN. And as you can see, the water is not really clear. It's a different color, darker color. It's crazy. I've never experienced anything like this in my hometown before. The boil water alert has been going on for the past month. And then to have to store water because you don't know how long we're going to go without water is hard. Just not knowing when the water will be all, all together and how long it's going to be. How long we're going to have to go through this. This is him filling up another tote of water. I've been stocking up at my house. We fill the tub up with water and he scooped it up and put it in containers. It's gonna be hard to do after a while and just exhausting. Boiling water to, to shower and to cook, to do everything that, you know, daily hygiene. This is our water supply for the kitchen. I wanna stop right there. You know, I'm sure y'all brothers have seen on the national media what's going on with Mississippi. I'll just read some of the sentences, it says, Mississippi's capital has been without reliable tap water service since Monday when rainwater flooding helped push a hobble treatment plant to begin failing. Significant gains have been made to restart the system, officials have said, but when potable water will flow again to Jackson's roughly nearly 150,000 residents, 
who for weeks already have been under a boil water alert remains an open question. And you know, when I go on social media, you know, a lot of brothers and just people in the world in general will speak on how, you know, Jackson is a, a community with over 80% of so-called black, you know, uh, citizens. And that's why essentially the system is damaged and destroyed. And yes, it is true that, you know, the more prestigious neighborhoods where predominantly white, you know, residents, Caucasian residents live, have better water treatment, have better, you know, power grids, have cleaner, you know, environments, because ultimately this is their country. And you would be a fool to sit here <laughs> and think that the people who oppress you and put you in a downtrodden state are gonna help their are gonna help you over their own. That's that's foolishness. And that's why ultimately you can't trust in Egypt. As in um, as the scripture in Isaiah says they go down to Egypt and they seek a covenant with Egypt and the uh, and um you know the Pharaoh shall fail them. I'm just roughly paraphrasing. You know, our people are going into the same state where they're realizing that the Pharaoh, where they're realizing that spiritual Egypt is starting to fail them, but they still want to put their trust in them. And that's why the scripture in Sirach, let's get that real quick. This is the book of Sirach. And we'll go to chapter 12. Let me see if I can find it. I think it's Sirach 12 and 8. Or uh, Sirach 12 and 9. It says, in the prosperity of a man, enemies will be grieved. But in his adversity, even a friend will depart. Never trust thine enemy, for like as an iron rusted, so is his wickedness. So the scripture says to never trust your enemy, because just like iron rust, your, your enemy is going to show his wickedness in due time. So as this country gets worse and worse, as the state of the people gets worse and worse, and as they start to forsake the people, not just so-called blacks, not just so-called Hispanics, but all the races, all the people who live in Babylon, but in predominantly the Jakes that live in Babylon, you're going to be the last thing on their mind. And you're going to start to see and notice that a lot of these incidents are going to happen in regards to the people losing, you know, basic needs like water, shelter, heat. You know, I'm sure y'all brothers seen in, in California how um, they said that people need to not charge their cars because the electrical grid is, you know, unable to sustain, you know, all the, the number of vehicles. And one thing that you brothers are starting to notice, and this is actually the main point of the article, is you're starting to notice that Babylon's system is failing. The infrastructure of this place is failing. Now, have there always been infrastructure issues? I mean, of course, every country has infrastructure issues. But one of the key aspects of a declining uh, empire is that the structure inside of the of the um, of the country, the railroads, the power grid, you know, water systems, giving basic needs to its citizens is going to start to fail more and more and more. This is an article I wanted to bring up right here. This is an article, I think it's from 2021 or 2022. I'm not remember, I don't remember off the top of my head. But it says, how bad is infra America's infrastructure really? And I actually wanted to go down. Um, I want to go down right here. This is America's infrastructure report card. It says, Compared to the world, the U.S. infrastructure is not terrible. According to the Global Competitiveness Report 2019, a scorecard released by the World Economic Forum, the U.S. ranked 13th out of 141 countries in overall infrastructure, but still scored perfect scores of 100 in various measures, including road connectivity, access to electricity, and the safety of its drinking water. Quality of roads got 5.5 out of 7. And as y'all brothers have lived y'all life, you lived in a, a quote unquote great country in regards to like, you know, the sheer power and the magnitude of what Esau has been able to create in America, right? Running water, electricity, broadband, Wi-Fi, you know what I'm saying? All, wireless, wireless phones. But one thing that you're going to start to notice in, within the next five to 10 years, however much longer the society has, is those basic necessities are going to be stripped quicker and quicker and quicker. Why? Because America is not going to be able to keep up and keep things proper. And also, you have to realize that the powers that be who want to weaken America are going to forcibly fail the infrastructure. Think about the Texas power grid thing that happened in 2021. Think about 
I mean, brothers can just Google all the things that have been coming on predominantly in the South, but just all across America in regards to the infrastructure of Flint, a city that had no good running water for how long? You know, them people haven't had good water for what, five years, six years? I don't even know how long they haven't had clean water. You see what I'm saying? So that's a telltale sign that America is getting weaker. And I wanted to read this right here. It says, shouldn't it be better? The same report which annually assesses the drivers of productivity and long-term economic growth ranked the US as second only to Singapore, taking all factors in consideration. People have been complaining about infrastructure being in a sorry, a sorry state for decades. Back in the 1980s, the book America in Ruins warned that spending on public work projects was decreasing and that the nation's public facilities were wearing out faster than they were being replaced. One of his co-authors, Pat Choate, warned Congress that one of every five U.S. bridges was in need of either a major overhaul or total reconstruction, and that New York City was losing 100 million gallons of water because of aging water lines, according to a New York Times account of his testimony. And I want to go down. The report cards haven't improved much since then. In 2015, the Brookings Institution warned that China was investing four to five times as much as the U.S. in maintaining and improving its infrastructure, and that Canada, Australia, South Korea, and European countries were spending significantly more as well. And in 2021, the American Society of Civil Engineers gave the U.S. a C- for the state of infrastructure across the nation. It warned that 43% of U.S. roads and highways are in poor or mediocre condition and that more than 46,000 of the nation's bridges were in such lousy shape that it would take another 50 years just to complete all current needed repairs. The levees and stormwater systems that protect many communities from flooding earned a degrade. Going back to what? Hurricane Katrina, Hurricane Irma. And if y'all brothers go in the South, you're going to start to notice that a lot of the water systems are piss poor garbage like i'm talking boo-boo you know when i was living in houston it would be a somewhat moderate storm and the streets would be flooded you know what i'm saying when where i lived at where my car was parked whenever the flood came or not the flood but whenever like a heavy storm came where we would park our car down it would be it would have like one to two feet of water for you to get to your car you have to walk through water and, you know, not even then, but even now where I'm at now in Texas, like Dallas, I don't know if y'all brothers have been Googling, but you've seen how there were, uh, you know, heavy storms for one, one and a half day. And there's roads downtown where, you know, people's cars are going underwater. It was a little storm that happened one or two hours yesterday for one or two hours and trees is all over, you know, knocked over. There's certain little states where cars is going underwater from a basic flood and look i'm not gonna sit here and say that you know things like that don't happen but you know living where i used to live in florida a lot of these things that are in my opinion seen don't seem as crazy or as bad it's causing a lot of damage to you know america and it's taking a lot longer for them to fix these things wherever city y'all brothers go in you see people working on highways and bridges and it seems like they can never fix it they can never finish it but ultimately that's coming because let me actually read this before i move on and, and make my statement it says public transit systems earned a d minus with nearly one in five transit vehicles six percent of tracks tunnels and other facilities in poor condition the nation's drinking water system loses enough water each day to fill more than 9,000 swimming pools, even though 12,000 miles of water pipes were being replaced each year. The electric grids were in somewhat better shape, but still dangerously vulnerable to bad weather. With 638 transmission outages over one recent four-year period. And I could keep going on. It's a long article. I'll read right here. How America got this way. There are multiple reasons why U.S. infrastructure isn't in a shape that it should be. The first simply is roads, bridges, and other pieces of infrastructure are designed to have a useful lifespan, and inevitably, inevitably their parts start to wear out. And you brothers understand, in the late 1800s, the early 1900s, America was a sprawling country. Uh, railroads, innovation, water dams, bridges, that's when they were getting built up, and that was the golden time of the American um, you know, uh, infrastructure, you know, back from the late 1800s to the early 1900s, y'all brothers understand a lot of the projects that were being done, the skyscrapers. But again, over time, as the nation starts to decline and decay, a lot of the road systems and infrastructure start to decay. Think about the, the uh, Roman 
uh, road system. That was one of the things that was a trademark of that system. But over time, what happened with the Roman road system, they couldn't pay for it. They couldn't maintain it. And their empire started to dwindle. So that's one of the signs is that if a country's infrastructure is starting to decay and decline, then that's letting you know where this place is going. You see what I'm saying? And it says another problem is that much of the nation's infrastructure is controlled by the public sector sector and its upkeep is supported by taxpayers. Much of the funding for maintaining highways and bridges, for example, comes from federal and state gasoline tax and increasing the taxes is politically risky for elected official, even though today's fuel efficient cars get more miles and put more wear and tear on the roads per gallon of gas. And I could keep going on. I don't want to make this too long, but another reason why your infrastructure is failing is because of the debt, because the ever increasing debt that's being paid to the Federal Reserve System. They're taking more money that would be used to keeping the economy and keeping the infrastructure of different cities and states across, you know, the entire United Nation, uh, United States has to go to paying an ever growing debt as they continue to build bases and, and keep their rate, their arms race with China and Russia this country starts to degrade. I was watching a video from, and y'all brothers should all subscribe to this channel called The Memory Hole. And there was one man who was talking about in 2007, how the US is on course to collapse because you can either have a strong domestic country or you can have a, a overextended um, foreign empire. And the dilemma that America has is they're trying to continue to stay as that world power trying to go to the Philippines, Japan, South Korea, Ukraine, Puerto Rico, Guam, you know, all these different places, while also at the same time trying to maintain a strong, you know, um, domestic, um, domestic uh, democracy, that one of those two things are going to fail. So as America tries to keep up that system, you and me as the average American citizen, our way of life is going to get worse and worse and worse. And ultimately, this country is doomed to fail. So you brothers are going to start to see a lot more stories of uh, Jackson, Mississippi, of one in 5,000 yearly event floods. Because as the Heavenly Father brings more plagues and curses on these people and on this place, they're not going to be able to uh, fix it. And that also goes back into biblical prophecy because... When you brothers go to the book of Isaiah, let's actually go there real quick. When you go to the book of Isaiah and you go down to chapter 19, one of the key plagues in the end times that will come on Egypt is this. This is Isaiah 19 and 14. It says, Yahweh has mingled a perverse spirit in the midst thereof and caused Egypt to error in every work. Therefore, as a drunken man staggered in his vomit. And what are the works of Egypt? I mean, obviously, we got the spiritual works, wicked, all the p words and the t words and the alphabet words coming out feminism quote unquote women empowerment focus on you know entertainment over education degrading math scores degrading english scores you know things like that but also works is just your farming they're destroying farms a lot of farmers are getting phased out they're using clone food now gmo i mean gmo food's been going on for years but it's getting to the point where <laughs> the food we eat has no type of nutritional value essentially different works like military the military is being degraded it's 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 a uh, pansy party <laughs> compared to a military unit you know what i'm saying illegal immigrants coming in you know they're giving all these different programs for them but also one of the main works is the infrastructure of america where read verse five it says neither shall there be any work for egypt which which the head or tail branch or brush may do and one of the key aspects of the tail of egypt is those blue collar workers those construction workers those electricians those plumbers you know when i was thinking about getting into electrician school and i was talking to people they were all talking about how there's a big shortage in needable electricians and a lot of the electricians from the 70s 80s and 90s as they're retiring they're not finding enough people who want to do that work because ultimately the backbone of America is being stripped from the inside out. And that's what most people don't realize. They're so focused on China and Russia and Ukraine and all this other bullshit that they're not realizing that the, and they realize it, but one thing that they don't understand is that is the telltale sign of a declining empire. I wanna go to the book of Sirach and I wanna go to chapter 38 real quick. Sirach chapter 38. And I'm going to go down to verse 25. And I'm just read through this. 
I read verse 27. It says, so every carpenter and workmaster that laboreth night and day and they that cut and grave seals and are diligent to make great variety and give themselves to counterfeit imagery and watch to finish a work. The smith also sitting by the anvil and considering the ironwork, the vapor of the fire wasted his flesh and he fought it with the heat of the furnace. The noise of the hammer and the anvil is ever in his ears, and his eyes look still upon the pattern of the thing that he maketh. He setteth his mind to finish his work, and watcheth to polish it perfectly. So does the potter sit at that work, turning the wheel about with his feet, who is always carefully set at his work, and maketh all his work by number. He fashions the clay with his arm, and bow down his strength before his feet. He applies himself to lead it over, and he is diligent to make clean the furnace all these trust in their hands and everyone is rise in his work and this is key right here it says without these cannot a city be inhabited and they shall not dwell where they will nor go up and down right and the key reason why i wanted to read that is because these are the things that are vital for a city if you don't have worksmen if you don't have you know uh smiths if you don't have and in these times we don't necessarily have smiths because honestly all of that shit has been you know outsourced to india and asia and china and you know eastern europe and that's also another telltale mexico canada remember when george bush signed the uh north atlantic free trade agreement that destroyed the infrastructure of america you know what i'm saying so you have to understand when you outsource all the vital jobs in america and you become a service-based entertainment-based tiktok based society it's gonna catch up to you and essentially the things that created a vital strong you know country are gonna go out the window and one thing that's happening if you look at it on the spiritual aspect is that those two trees those two branches are starting to shift because physically america is starting to be taken down a notch but spiritually is being brought up a notch and that ties back into ezekiel 17. let me get that real quick this is ezekiel we'll go to chapter 17 and we'll go to verse 22 it says Thus saith Yahweh, I will take also the highest branch of the high cedar, and I will set it. I will crop, crop off from the top of his young twigs a tender one, and will plant it upon a high mountain, an eminent. And that tender one is Yahweh Shai. Yahweh Shai is that tender twig, that tender branch. He will set it up top. That's the king. That's the king of the nation. Verse 23, And the mountain of the height of Israel will I plant it, and it shall bring forth bows and bear fruit, and be a goodly cedar, and under it shall dwell all fowl of every wing, and the shadows of the branches thereof. So Ye Yahweh is going to set uh, Yahweh Shai and his followers on that mountain, that mountaintop for everybody to see, right? All the other nations to see. And it will bring forth bows and bear fruit, meaning bearing fruits of the spirit, and be a goodly cedar. A cedar with water, a cedar with nutrition, a cedar with a, a protection. And just like a healthy environment allows other animals to what? To thrive in it. When it says, under it shall dwell all the fowl of every wing, that's talking about the other nations sh shall dwell underneath Israel. Marie verse 24 it says, and all the trees of the field shall know that I, Yahweh, have brought down the high tree which is what this is kingdom the edomites the so-called white man and his his empires are being brought down more and more and i have exalted the low tree which is who the last of the society the israelites man so he will exalt the low tree and dry up the green tree and make the dry tree to flourish the green tree is the people who are given all the knowledge on the left hand side all the you know taking all the credit all the prestige in the dry tree the people who lack knowledge the people who lack spiritual water who lack spiritual understanding he's allowing that dry tree us being in captivity to flourish so ayahu has spoken and done it so brothers got to rejoice and understand that as we see these things, it's a telltale sign of what's to come. But you also have to be able to prepare because things like losing running water is going to be more commonplace. And if you sit here and you're trying to rely on Esau going to your Kroger, going to your Publix and thinking, I'm going to get water, I'm going to get food. Hey, man, there's going to be a lot of times more and more where these things are going to be in short supply. So you got to be prepared for it. So Lord willing, this lesson was edifying. I give all praises to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. Until next time, it's the brother Ash signing out.